So if you had the appraisal, you had the buyer totally pre-approved, everything was done, the verifications were in, um, it had already gone to underwriting, the loan, the buyer's approved, basically everything's done, the loan has been floating, and we're ready to lock. Right now we're ready to close, basically. Then a lock could be, lock could be had for 15 days, let's say, and in this example, let's say that there was no points. Okay? Okay. But sometimes when a buyer calls and says, what's your interest rate and what are your points, the lender wants to put their best foot forward. So they'll say, I'm at 3.75 and zero points. Okay, but my transaction is going to close in 40 days. Right. So maybe this, and by the way, there's no math here. This all varies depending upon the day and the type of loan. So don't get hung up with numbers. This is simply an example. But this could be a quarter of a point. And this could be a half a point. And this could be 0.625. And I just made those up. Okay, understand that these numbers change all the time. The point is the example that the longer out the lock, the higher the point to get to that. Does everybody get that? Or let's say we had 4% here, and we had minus 2.5, or yeah, and then we had zero, and then we had a quarter, and then we had 0.375. So the, the different the interest rate, the different the term of the lock, these are days. So one of the things that you'll want to ask is, what's your interest rate and for how many days? You need to ask what the lock is, what they can do. Some buyers say, rates are behaving. I'm, I'm not going to lock. I mean, I, uh, you know, there's several loans that, you know, like they're four or five months out. And there are extended locks that you can get. But, you know, unless you really think that rates are going to go right through the roof, you can see they start to charge more money the further out you do. Some buyers say, hey, you know, I'd rather, I, I don't trust it. I'm going to go for it, lock it in, call it a day, all good. And if the tra transaction is written in such a way, let's say the seller's paying some of those closing costs and it's enough to cover that, Every day, everything's good, and then lock it in, have a nice day. So when you write up a purchase and sales agreement and you have a closing date on there, and let's say it's an FHA transaction, what are you putting down as the number of days before closing? Ask the lender. How much 45, 45 days, 60 days. That's what you're putting down on the purchase and sales agreement on it. Is anybody doing anything less than that? I haven't been able to get them quicker. 30 days. 30 days. I've done the last three in 30 days. Right. If everything is cream puff, 30 days is fine. You get a hiccup. You know, the reason why we're mad at the underwriters at the end is because it happens at the end. <laughs> well, it goes back to the lender when he says he can close it 30 days. We right. Right. And so we have this enabling, we have this enabling going on where the lender says, I need this deal. I want this deal. Can we do it in 30 days? Sure. You know, and. I'd rather you tell me 45 and do it in 30. Tell me 60 and do it in 45. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. But see, what they're afraid of is if, if I, if I or whoever says 45 and then you go, hey, I know a lender that will do it in 30 and then. And then they have a problem with escrow or they have problems with, with title or whatever. And then we have a delayed closing. Then that, you know, it, it, everybody is trying to put their best foot forward. And the other dynamic here is, hey, that buyer's not going to pay that other quarter a point. Truth of the matter is, if you want to encourage a smooth transaction, write down 45 days. I think it's reasonable. I think it's a prudent think it's appropriate. I think 30 days is pushing the story. And the reason why is um, underwriters are paranoid. 
All right. So just, you know, I wanted to explain that lock process because I didn't know if you had been through that. And then we went down the rabbit hole a little bit more. Um, and by the way, um, all the word is on the street, you know, the Fed is going to leave the rates alone until 2013, um, you know, 2014. So right now it's kind of like we're still in a very fragile place economically. So there's no current indicators that rates will spike. Okay. That doesn't mean they might not go up a quarter or go down a quarter, but for the, for the most, most part, um, they appear to be behaving themselves. 